The sun shines differently through these windows. I can see my life colored by all that's gone before. Dreams, hopes, <laughs> and the orneriest pig-headed dreamer of a boy, my brother, John Sager. Most folks said he didn't have the sense God gave a pump handle. But John knew one thing about life, that's for sure. He knew that a heart without a dream could be as dark and as lonely as a house without windows. Near a mountain I hear it call How young and small you and I must see. But the mountain was made for climbing. Let's get the climbing done. We've only begun. Our dream Every sunset We leave behind us I know we'll find us Closer to the day Now, careful, it's hot. Right, Mama. Come on, girls, it's going on seven. Catherine, you've been in that bed long enough. I wonder where your brother is, Miss Linda. He should be here with the milk by now. Tell him to hurry and he'd do it. A lot of good in you, John Sager. But sometimes I wonder if I'm going to live long enough to see it showing. Now, I want you to get on that horse and push the cows up to grass. Do you understand me? Greg, 
go with you, John? Only if you keep your mouth shut. Now, I don't want you boys fooling around and wasting time. We've got plenty more right here for you to do. Now, go on. Nobody around here can take a joke. All they think about is chores and more chores. Well, I'm sick of it. I have a mind to run away. You don't do much anyway. Nobody'd miss you. Didn't I tell you to keep your mouth shut? There's a lot of guys my age out scouting and trapping. Boy, wouldn't that be your life? Nothing to do but scalp Indians and shoot a buffalo. I bet you. Look at that, Francis. Look at all those wagons, all men and wet. Boy, if Papa could see that. Get off, I'm gonna go tell him. Papa told you to drive these cows, I'll go back. Get off. You big bully, I'm gonna lick you good someday. Papa, Papa. <laughs> Wagon train coming and they're all heading west. Marcus Whitman Company, Naomi. They're right on time, just like they said they'd be. And to think we could have been going with them. Oh, Henry, not again, please. There's no need talking about it. After all these years of you opposing me, I don't expect you to understand me now. Let me ride behind you, Johnny. Me too. There ain't no room. I know something on you. What? That hard side of your neck of poppers. Why, that's Billy Shaw with Dr. Whitman. How can you ever think of traipsing across 2,000 miles of wilderness with this family, Henry? We've worked and sacrificed so hard for this place. I can't help it, Naomi. Every man has his dream. Mama, Mama, look! Oh, John Sager. Matilda, would you like to ride with Uncle Billy? Mm -hmm. Huh? Come on, here we go. Hi, darling. Howdy, Billy. Hi. Hello. Doctor, welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. One more stunt like that, John Sager. Hi, Billy. Well, don't tell me that you and Sally are going now, with... Now, hold on, hold on. You don't think we'd leave without taking our good neighbors along? <laughs> Hi, Dr. Whitman. Just riding a little way with Dr. Whitman? No, we're going next year. Naomi, did you hear that? The Polks and the Argyles and Mitchells and the Shaws, they're all going next year. You know, Mrs. Sager, it's not really as dangerous a trip as most people think. I have more women and children going every year. The way Dr. Whitman tells about Oregon country and the Willamette Valley, it's hard for any man to resist. Can you imagine, Henry? Black soil, hundreds of feet deep and thousands of acres of it. Oh, and flowers, the whole year round. That's right, I swear. I'd love to go out west. Me too. Dr. Women, is it true you know Kit Carson? Kit Carson, Jim Bridger, Fremont, know them all. You see, Dr. Whitman and his wife run a mission near the end of the Oregon Trail. Everybody going west stops over there one time or another. Maybe we'll be seeing you folks next year. You know, if we Americans don't get that uh, Oregon country, the British will. Well, so long, folks. Bye-bye, Dr. Bye, Dr. Whitman. Bye, Bye folks. Bye. Billy. Bye. Give my best to Mrs. Whitman. Carson. You know, a man can, he can make a place for himself out there in Oregon. Why, he can plow enough acreage so that he can become part of America forever. Come on, girls. Papa, ain't there no way we can talk Mom into going? 
Sometimes I think only the voice of the Lord could change that woman's mind. And then sometimes I wonder if even that'll do it. The way you keep polishing that glass, Naomi, morning and night. You know, someday you can wear it out. That's what makes it so pretty, Papa. I love Mama's windows. They're my most favorite thing in our whole house. When I think about all the gloomy days, these windows have brought me sunshine and happiness. You know, I remember this very same pane in my grandmother's parlor. Her polishing it. And then it was my mother's. Now it's mine. And we've packed them to every house we've ever lived in. You know, sometimes, Naomi, I wonder which you'd pick if you had to choose between that window and me. I love you too, Henry. We're done, Mama. All right, girls. Off to bed. But ain't we gonna read the Bible? Are my ears hearing me correct? Is that you, John Sager? That's a mighty sudden change for a boy who's never been too interested in the Bible. Johnny wants to read the Bible? Be quiet, I'll knock your head off. All right, boys. Girls, sit down and listen to your brother before he changes his mind. Can I read it? What do you say, Johnny? All right, girls, now be quiet. Listen. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. For the husbands are the head of the wives, even the bosses. And the wives should do what the husbands tell them to, wheresoever they desireth them to go. That's enough, John Sega. I know what you're trying to do. And you're twisting the scriptures. It's not going to work. Don't look at me, Naomi. I... <laughs> I didn't put him up to it. All right. Listen. Once and for all, I'm not going west, and that's final. I'll bet you old Jim Bridger and Kit Cars never had to eat trail deaths like this. If I had any sense, I'd run away and become a scout or a trapper. John up here to help me. Yes, Daddy. There you are, honey. Here. Put this around you. There you go. Business. Pop one, 
too. He said for me to drive the herd. You'll have to go find them. They're back by that clump of trees. You better drive them up near our wagon. But I can't cut him out of the herd. You'll have to help me. John! You better not tell Papa I've been playing cards either. I will if you don't help me. You do and I'll knock your head off. You hateful, lazy thing. Whoa. 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 All right, John. Get on that wheel and give it all you got. Tell me. Yes. You got a good tight hold on them horses? Don't worry about me. You just keep pushing. I'll handle the team. All right. Papa! Papa! What's wrong? I can't find her town. What? The big herd's gone. Billy Penrose is tied up in those trees. And he and some of the other boys have been playing cards under an old wagon. Henry! Henry, please! Give the boy a chance to have his say. He's had more than his share of chances. <laughs> your business, John Sager. And push when I tell you. Get ready, children. Okay. Steady, boys. Steady. Push! this would have happened. All the cows gone and this poor child with the broken leg. Now, Dr. Dutch, you can't blame John for the broken leg. And I'm sure he's sorry about the cows. Sorry? Teufel in him. Oh, he does not even know the meaning of the word. Wait till Henry gets back. He'll be standing to eat, that boy will. You feeling better now, Catherine? Much better, Mama. That's good. Now remember, child, you must lie still. You must not try to stand up or you will be crippled all your life. Henry. Oh, Papa. What's happened to Catherine? The wagon wheel ran over her leg. Dr. Dutch says it snapped clean in two. Did you find the cows in Yeah, we found them. But it cost me ten dollars to get them back. Ten dollars? Henry, why? It was a band of Indians that had them hidden about five miles from here. Billy and the others are bringing them back now. Well, I'd better go heat up his supper then. Come on, Dr. Dutch. Remember, child, I still... Yeah, that Dr. Dutch is a quack doctor, and I've heard that from more than one person. For a boy who's about to get a licking, you do well to speak of your elders with more respect. Ain't you gonna let me explain? You've done all you could to earn a licking ever since we left home. You've been lazy. You've been disobedient. You've played all kinds of pranks on the other wagons. And now this business about the cattle. You come outside, boy. And I want you to drop your bridges.
Hey, you, you dirty rat skin! Well, where's your clothes at? Dirty engine stolen. Well, what are you doing out here alone? I had trouble with my pa. I run away from our wagon. You pulled a sneak, did you? Well, you're big enough in size. But I'll bet your mind ain't more than five years old. Imagine being out here as long as you have and not having sense enough to stay with your outfit. Well, pa licked me now. I'm too old to be licked. Well, if I was your pa, I'd lick the way out of you from morning till night till you got some sense in your head. Now you come over here and I'll take you back. Is that your wagon down there? Yeah, I guess they're waiting for me. Now, unless you won't lose your scalp, you better hang on. <laughs> Hey, mister, don't you know better than get separated from your main outfit? I know, but my wife... No not... time for explaining. We've got to get out there to meet them. They'll want to parley first. All right. John, get up the wagon. Come on my right. Quick. Dr. Dutch, get rid of the drive like the devil, just in case. Me? Drive, drive. Once a doctor, now a drover. New baby sister, John. Looks like they're sending their leader out to do the bargaining. That's the Indian I paid the $10 to last night to get my cows back. Are you willing to give up any more? Well, uh, we don't have any food to spare. And I ain't about to give up my only saddle horse. Well, you just stay here and let me handle it.
Sure was a brave thing you did there, Mr. Sager. Everybody here all right? Thanks to this stranger, we are. Well, don't thank me, thank the boy. If I hadn't run into him, I'd have gone on to the main outfit. We're still mighty obliged to you, Mr. Uh... Carson. Kit Carson. You're a Kit Carson? Well, no, ain't this something? I heard you've been traveling this trail a lot. Well, where are you folks headed? The Willamette Valley in Oregon. If you're going that way, we'd sure like to have you travel along with us. Well, I sure do thank you for the invitation, but I'm on important government business, and... I'll see you folks further on up the trail. All right. So long. Just remember what I told you, John. If you listen to your Paul, he's one of the bravest men I've ever seen. Who is that man? Who is this Kit Carson? <laughs> I think maybe you better keep to your medicine, Dr. Dutch. Come on, let's help Henry back to his wagon. Yes. Wait for me. about you, boy. You're lazy and you're good for nothing. All right. Go on and do your job. Go on. Terrible boy. Look what you cost your father. Henry, you must let me drive for you. I'll be all right. And let Naomi watch the team while I look at your shoulder. Get in their wagon. Doctor's got it in for me. Snoop around, get me in trouble with Papa. Serves you right. Why well, ain't letting him get away with it?
bless everyone tonight. Better, I hope. Ah. Dr. Dad? Yeah? Do I have to stay in this wagon? Can't I go sit out by the fire? What? And take a chance to break that bone again? You stay put, my child. She must not be moved under any circumstances. And how is their little mama and their little baby? Strong as can be, Doctor. Kichiku. Kichiku, 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 kichiku. Beautiful baby. You, Henry. Is that shoulder of yours giving you any trouble? It's worse than it was yesterday, Doctor. Are you sure you didn't leave something in it? Well, let's take a look. <coughs> that terrible boy of yours, he's trying to kill me. <coughs> All right, you children. Isn't there something that you should be doing before you go to bed? Hey, Henry, with all your troubles, I think maybe you should go back from where you came. Nothing will ever turn Henry back, Doctor. Well, let me see now. How does it look, Doctor? I don't know. For one week old, it should not be so red. You should not use it so much, Henry. You should let me drive. No, Papa. We don't need him. I can drive. What? A boy who falls asleep at the reins? <laughs> he wants to be a great scout like Kit Carson. Him a scout? <laughs> Even the horses laugh. <laughs> him who runs away, who loses their cows, and falls asleep at the reins? Why, you could not even scout your own backyard. <laughs> well, I must tend to the other sick. And remember, Henry, if you want me, I'm ready to help. Papa, how can you let him talk about me like that and not say nothing? Well, now let me see. If I rightly remember, you did run away. And you did fall asleep. What exactly did you want me to say? Come here, son. John, I know sometimes you think I'm awful hard on you. Son, I'm only doing it for your own good. Because this is a tough country, boy, and it's going to take tough men to make it great. And you're the kind that one day's going to do it. But you've got to learn right now, while you're young, what it means to be responsible and trustworthy. That's the biggest part of growing up and being a man. Do you understand?
medicine that you could, man, Naomi. Ever since supper, he's been getting worse. Doctor, please, you've got to do something. Billy, help me get him in the tent. We've seen you, boys. Henry. You just get a good night's rest, you'll feel fine. Thank you for all your help, Billy. Good night. Good night. Carson said, You're the bravest and the greatest man. As I can remember, Papa wanted to plow that black soil out on the Willamette. But now he'll never do it. You know something, Francis? I'd sure give a lot if I'd been a better son to Papa these last few months.
In thee, dear Lord, do I put my trust. For thou art my rock, my fortress. Into thine hands I commit my spirit. ready to deliver, and there are more folks down with that blast of dysentery. I got a team up here and help you out of this fix, John. time, Catherine. Oh, John, dearest I? Of course. Come on. Francis, help me get her on her feet. The Dr. Dutch said... The devil with Dr. Dutch. Now, get used to him for a minute, and we'll wish your mama. She's doing it, Johnny. She's doing it. Billy. Yeah? We must hold up a couple of days until this epidemic is over. We're behind schedule already. With dysentery, we have no schedule. I must tell you, Billy, there's hardly a wagon in this whole company that is not infected. Well, I guess we've got no other choice. I'll go tell the others. She will be crippled for life. Let her be. She'd rather be lame than stay in that old wagon all the time. Wouldn't you, Catherine? Yes, I would. Oh, now, Catherine, I think the doctor knows best. He don't know beans. Anybody knows a broken bone heals up sooner than this. Anyway, if Dr. Dutch would have taken better care of Papa, he'd still be alive today. What, you dumb cough, you? Take your hands off me. I'm head of our home now. And another thing. It's any bit of use for you to try to marry my mom, because I won't let you. I'm sorry, Doctor. John. I know what you want me to go do. You want me to go tell him I'm sorry. Well, I ain't gonna, because what I said was true. John, let's suppose that Francis came to you and said that you were bossy and used bad grammar. What would you say? I'd knock his head off. But it's true. I don't care. I wouldn't let a kid like that say such things to me. That's exactly how Dr. Dutch feels. 
John, go sit down. I want to talk to you. Oh, little Anna. Don't you like her? Yeah, but there's always many others fussing over. There's no one here now. John, I'm going to give little Anna to you for your very own. What? Now that your father's gone. She needs a man to take care of her while she's growing up. And you're the man of the family now. Yeah, but I don't know how to take care of a baby. She just needs lots of love. She's your special baby. And I know that you'll take care of her, just as I know that you'll always keep the children together. I can trust you to do that. Yes, Mama. Mama was slipping away. I think John must have known that. But us kids, we just thought she was tired. Mama died of pneumonia on the darkest night I can remember. And on that night, for the first time in our lives, we were alone. Now, all of you, stop your fretting. They're not going to divide us up. I promised Mama I'd keep the family together, and that's just what I'm going to do. Johnny, do you think we'll all be together with Mama and Papa again? Of course we will. If God put us in the same family down here, it's a sense He wants us together up in heaven. Well. You're a hard-nosed boy to deal with, John Sager. I guess we're going to have to give in to you this time. Think you can handle this uh, brood of yours all the way to Fort Hall? I know I can. Well, that's fine for everybody but this little baby. Give it to me, Catherine. No, she's mine. Mama, give her to me. Please, John. I'm not going to keep her. All right. But just remember, she's mine. Now, your mother left enough money to send you back to Missouri. We'll make all the arrangements in Fort Hall for you to stay there during the winter. Come on, Matilda. You can stay with Aunt Sally, too. Now, I'm boss of this family. I can lick anyone if you don't do what I say. And you know it. I ain't gonna be bullied. If you're fair, I'll let you be boss. If you ain't... You have to scalp me before I mind. Keep quiet. Let's see what he wants. Well, the first thing is, I want to write down about Mom in the Bible. And while I'm at it, I want to change the baby's name. I want to call her Henrietta Naomi, after Pop and Mama. <laughs> I'll get the Bible.
Folks over here. Now, if you want my advice, it's too late in the year to try to go on to Oregon. Of course, if you want to die of lung fever or freeze and starve to death in the Blue Mountains, well, go ahead. But if you have an ounce of sense, you'll decide in favor of California. Well, if it ain't young John Sager. Mr. Carson. I was hoping our paths would cross again. Oh, my glad to see you. Well, how's your mom and pa and the rest of that family of yours? Mom and Papa died, Mr. Carson. Well, I'm sure sorry I hadn't heard. Well, what are your plans now? Well, Mama planned to stay till spring and then take us back to St. Louis with some traders. But now the Shaws want to keep the baby and Matilda, and I ain't going to let them. Well, that don't hardly seem fair. The last thing my mama told me was to keep the family together. So now we're going to go on to Oregon, we're going to take up that homestead, just like Papa planned. You know, John, that's a job for at least two full-grown men, and this late in the year with the snows coming, the wagon just won't make it through. I wouldn't take a wagon. I'd use a pack train, just like Uncle Billy and the others. All I've got to do is convince Uncle Billy to let us go along. Could you help us, Mr. Carson? You could talk him into it. Well, you sure got a lot of spunk and determination. You wait right here, I'll be back. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I started out for the Willamette Valley, and that's where I'm going. You can count me in, Shaw. Good, yeah, good. That's fine. Billy Shaw, I have a matter to take up with you. Why, Mr. Carson? It's about that young fellow by the name of John Sager. Heard of him? <laughs> yes. Young Sager, I suppose you know that all has been arranged for you to remain at the fort this winter. I don't need no quack doctor telling me nothing. So I'm taking my family on to Oregon. Have you lost your mind? What does a dumb kid like you know about this country? Yeah. Disrespectful young cub. I'm sorry, John, but he's convinced he's doing what your mama wanted him to do, and if you want my advice, I think you're best off doing what he says. I've been hoping and praying I'd find you, because I knew you'd help me do what my pa wanted. But you just like the rest of them. Hey, wait a minute. You think I don't want to help you? I tell you I would if I only knew how. I don't need nobody's help. I can do it on my own. You gotta be plumb loco to take off out there by yourself. Maybe so, but I gotta do it anyhow. I've never met anybody like you, John Sager. You're more stubborn than five mules in a bathtub. Now, you come along with me. You and I got a lot of thinking to do. What if Mr. Carson changes his mind? He said he'd come and he will. Now, you better be getting the girls up and tell them to be quiet. Ready? Sure thing, Mr. Carson. Boy, you sure got two fine mules. Well, I got a good price for your wagon and team, and you should have enough supplies and pemmican to last you. What's pemmican? Oh, that's a tasty little dish the Indians make. Sure tastes good if you can overlook the hair. Is this everything you want loaded? Everything we got room for. John, you almost forgot these. We're not taking them, Louisa. There's not room. You can't leave Mama's windows. Mr. Carson, can't we take them? What windows are you talking about? That would be a fine thing, a house without windows. I think we can find a place for them on old Silas. Don't you two have another job to do? Wake up! What's 
strong friend, sir. We gotta hide. Those engines, hurry. Here, take this. John, don't you let that show company get ahead of you more than a day or two, or you're going to be in a lot of trouble. By the time you catch up with them, you're going to be far enough down the trail, they're not going to want to send you back. Another thing, you tell old Shaw if he's got any sense, he'll hold up for the winter at Whitman's mission. Well, how far before we get there? Not till you get over the Blue Mountains, the last leg of the journey. You tell Mrs. Whitman that Kit Carson sent you. She'll take real good care of you, especially that baby. Thanks, Mr. Carson, for all you've done. I wish she's going with us. Well, when I get through that army business, I might just come over to the Willamette and see how you're doing. We'd be mighty pleased if you'd do that. Well, I plan on it. And when I get there, I'd like to see that house with all them pretty windows, you hear? Oh, I hate this pelican stew. You did it all night. I know, I know. You'll knock my head off. Say, isn't today Sunday? Yes, it is. I remember Aunt Sally said they always read the prayer book and sang hymns on Sunday. This being Sunday, we're going to hold services right here ourselves. Francis, go get the Bible and give it to me. You're not our father and mother, and they're the only one in the family that I would let read the Bible to me. Go get the Bible, or I'm going to give you a beating. I'm not going to. Stop it! All right, I'll get it. Can I read it, John? Said I was going to read it. Here. Blessed is he who is merciful to little children and leadeth them with love and kindness and understanding. It's them! They're coming! It's Uncle Billy! I want Aunt Billy! Shh! Not so loud! They don't dream we're watching. Let them get a day or so ahead of us, then we'll follow them.
We're gonna camp here for a while, because we're gonna build a raft. That's what we're gonna do. Let's get busy. Francis, you take care of the stock. find out is to try it. Where's Louisa? She was here just a minute ago. There she is. What's wrong with her? She's scared of the water, that's what. Ever since she found that old swan hole back home, remember? Well, we don't have time for foolishness like this. Come on, Louisa, stop acting like a baby. No! Stop it. Either you come out of there or I'll give you a lick and you'll never forget. You bully, you can't force a person not to be scared. Since you think you know it all, Smarty, you do it. Come on, Louisa. I won't let John spank you, I promise. And you don't have to get on that raft till you're good and ready. I'm not going on that raft. Look, Louisa, there's nothing to be scared of. I'll hold on to you real tight, and you can close your eyes if you like. We have to get across the old river. No! All right, then. I guess Mama will never have that house she wanted out in Oregon. Poor Mama. Bet she's looking down from heaven right now and feeling real sad. And Papa, too. Captain, wait! Do you really think that Mama and Papa are looking down from heaven? Of course they are. They've been watching over us ever since they died. Isn't that right, Johnny? Yeah. We're well, their children, ain't we? Then I guess I won't be scared. Of
sorry, John, but I just couldn't hold on any longer. That's okay, old trapper. You did the best you could, and that's what counts. Come on, let's go find him. Now you girls stay here and get ready to go. They were watching over us, weren't they? Who was, Mama and Papa? about that. She don't take to Betsy's milk, and they seem pretty friendly. Don't worry. I won't let them steal her. Camp. This is such a lovely place. I wish we could stay here for a whole week. With John pushing us, we're lucky to stay here for a whole minute. Henrietta get to be a papoose, Johnny. Stop your fretting, Matilda. You think I'd give my own little baby to a bunch of engines? Wish they'd quit staring. Makes me nervous.
Thank you, ma'am. Much obliged to you. gone except some baby things and some blankets. Well, at least we got our scalps. It didn't take Mama's windows because I've been sleeping with them. John, what are we going to have for breakfast? Well, at least, why ask me? Because you're always telling us who's boss. So you should be in charge getting some food. Look, Smarty, you want licking? You can't hit Catherine. She's the only mother we've got. Come on, Francis, let's go see what we can find. The rest of you get ready to move out. If we don't catch up with Uncle Billy now, we're really in trouble. <laughs> John Sager and his brood. What in blazes, boy? We've been trying to catch up to you since Fort Hall. You poor children, you look starved. We haven't eaten for two days. Emily, get them something to eat. John, ha, let me have that little thing. How is she? She cries a lot, Mrs. Polk. She acts like she's sick. Maybe some warmer clothes will help. I'll give her some of our little Myra's. She, uh... Come on, children. Little Myra drowned in the last river crossing. That's what decided us to come this way. This way? Don't you know where you are, boy? This is the California Trail. California? But where's Billy Shaw? Still bent for the Willamette. We left him and Dr. Dutch back on the Oregon Trail 20 miles or so. You must have been careless at the forks. Thanks, Mr. Cole. Sure obliged for the food. Nothing ever tastes as good in my whole life. We've been talking things over, John, trying to come to some sensible decision. Adam, we're taking him with us, surely. Little Henrietta. Ain't none of us going with you, not even the baby. We're going on to Oregon. Don't be foolish, son. You're talking about 20 miles of backtracking. You'll never catch up with the Shaws. I want to stay with Mrs. Polk. Me too. Don't you kids want to take up that homestead for Papa? Some Indians stole our supplies. If you could sell us a few, I'd give you my pa's watch. Well, like I said, we, we ain't got much to spare, but we'll let you have what we can. You can keep your pa's watch. Adam, you're not going to just let him go off by themselves like that. Give him the baby, Emily. Well, we won't hold you folks up any longer. Come on, kids. We've got a lot of backtracking to do. White Man Trail take too long. 
Indian trail take you fast. You know a shorter way to the Oregon Trail? Over mountain. John and that Indian figured they knew what they were doing. But to me, leaving the pokes was as foolish a thing as anyone could ever do. And if you'd have asked me then what our chances were of ever running into the Shaws, I'd have told you, all our chances put together wouldn't have filled a thimble. Careful, we're going to lose White Elk. Look how far ahead he is. Hey, you crazy Indian! Stop! <laughs> hey, we got a sick papoose back there. Can't you slow down? White children slow like turtles. We we'll never catch Billy Shaw. We got to. You got a fast pony. You ride ahead and tell Uncle Billy to wait for us. First, you give me father's watch. No, the deal was for you to get us to the Shaws. All right, here. But you better stick to your bargain and not run off. All right, hurry up. Sick, Aunt Sally. We thought maybe you could help. We know, John. White Elk was here. He's gone on to the Whitman mission to bring back help. That's Caillou's country. He told me he'd never go that far. He said they'd scalp a Ute Indian for sure. Well, all I know is, he said, Mrs. Whitman could help your sick baby. And for you to wait here. Feed him too fast, Catherine. It'll make him worse. Where, where'd you get the meat, John? One of our mules was killed by wolves. There's enough soup here to last you for a week. And plenty of wood. You girls got everything ready. We don't want to go, Johnny. We want to stay here with Aunt Sally. Please, Johnny. Please. I don't want to hear any more talk like that. We've got to go. But why the hell said we should stay here till he brings help? The baby'd be dead by then. Look at her. If I should keep her alive till we get to Mrs. Whitman, she might have a chance. But if we stay, she'll die. And I promised Mom. You're right, John. That baby needs to be under shelter. In a house with a woman's care. By going on to meet the rescue party, you'll be that much closer. Well, 
We'll make sure you get help as soon as possible. Thank you, Jim. I'll be just safe. John's worst fear was staring him dead in the eye. Winter. The colder it got, the harder he pushed us. Look, there's White Elk's tracks again. Francis, you turn Betsy and Silas loose to graze. I'm going to go gather some wood and make a fire that'll melt the snow off this whole mountain. You mean we get to rest? I reckon. It'll be easy for Dr. Whitman to find us here. What makes you think you'll find us here? to eat. I'm tired of eating poor old Hiram. Look, Henrietta is smiling. <laughs> Johnny, Henrietta smiles. John, you look sad. We're not staying here. We're moving on. But Johnny... Shut up, all of you. You dare say another word, I'll whip the lot of you. Now, Francis, get that stuff loaded back up on Silas. I ain't going to. You ain't what? I'm staying here till morning. We've been traveling half the night and all day, and I'm too tired to move on. And another thing, I'm sick and tired of you bossing me around. Get going or I'm going to knock your head off. You'll have to knock my head off, too, because I ain't going either. That goes for me. Me, too. Okay. Then I'm going on without you. Bring him back to life. Come on. Straighten up, all of you. We've either got to go on or freeze to death. You've got to quit driving so hard, John. I kept it from me, but I found White Elk dead and scalped. Never made it to the Whitmans. And the only way we're ever going to see them is to keep on going for as long as I tell you to. Yet it hasn't moved since the last place we stopped. What things do we leave behind? Thank you. 
on, Louise. We gotta keep going. No, I'm too tired. Francis, stop! Come no. on, just a little farther. No. Come on. Don't worry, everything's gonna be all right. You're in charge now, old trapper. to you. You'd save her. Please, Miss Woman, don't let her die. See for yourself, John. Thanks, Mrs. Whitman, for all you've done. Johnny, isn't this a lovely place? Look what I found to read. Mrs. Whitman says that we could stay as long as we want. Now, if you quit pushing me. Have you forgot Papa's dreams? As soon as spring comes, we're going to go out there and we're going to take up that homestead for him. These little ones need a home and a mother. She's right, John. What if... Mr. Carson makes arrangements with the government to hold land for you. Can you do that? Sure I can. You know, I've got just the spot in mind. It's beautiful. You've never seen land like it. Green as far as the eyes can see. Hundreds of acres. You know, your pa would be mighty proud of you if you'd set up a homestead there. 
Is there a meadow there, Mr. Carson? Well, what'd you have in mind, boy? Just a place to build that house Mom always wanted. John's promise was this valley, sheltered by tall trees, covered with sweet green grass. It was as beautiful as the dream that lived in our hearts and in the hearts we left behind. Hear the mountain, I hear it call. How young and small you and I must seem But the mountain was made for climbing Let's get the climbing done, we bone our dream Every sunset We leave behind us I know we'll find us Closer to the day But only a dream of